for uh, joining us today here at um, Starfish. Um, today we're going to be talking about, uh, we're going to have our Galactic Decentralized Web 3.0 Town Hall. And first of all, before we get started, I want to get a show of hands of how many developers do we out have out there today? We have de some serious developers? Great. How many people are just blockchain enthusiasts uh, or investors? Got a couple out there. Great. Well, thank you so much for that. Uh, so I think, um, I think you're really going to enjoy what we have to show for you today. So today, nearly all applications developed rely on centralized infrastructure services. Uh, you know, things like um, S3, for instance, for storage. These services can not only be costly, but often can introduce a single point of failure, and in some markets, even a tool for censorship and control. So we asked ourselves, how can we make it easier for developers to create decentralized apps that avoid these problems? So we had a unique opportunity where we actually were able to bring CTOs from four different decentralized infrastructure projects together. And we challenged ourselves to develop a truly Web 3.0 decentralized application. So, um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about the agenda. So we'll actually uh, have um, uh, intros by all four of the companies that we have here today, Bluezell, NKN, Noya, and Portal. Uh, and then we're also going to give you a demonstration because through the workshop and the collaboration that we have together, we've actually developed an app that uh, actually demonstrates all of these different technologies. So today, um, let me introduce to you um, some of the folks that you're going to be hearing from. Uh, the first is Niraj. Uh, he's the CTO of Bluezell. Bluezell is a decentralized database ecosystem. Uh, we also have Yilan Zhang. He's the CTO of NKN. NKN stands for New Kind of Network. Uh, and that is a uh, P2P networking uh, protocol. Uh, we'll also have Jonas, who's the CTO of Noya Network, and that's a decentralized CDN, content delivery network. And then we'll also have, well, we won't have Chris today. We'll actually have <laughs> his, uh, his, uh, Vincent actually talking. Uh, Chris has actually been so busy, he's lost his voice. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, Portal is uh, not only a name service, but uh, we'll also be demonstrating the, the abilities of a development uh, tool called Kaizen as well. So without further ado, I'm actually going to hand this over to Bluezell and uh, Naraj. Thank you. Oh. Well, thanks for coming, everyone. So um, yes, thanks for having me. I'm Neeraj. I'm the uh, co-founder and CTO of Bluezell. And um, I'm going to talk, take about five minutes to talk briefly about Bluezell before I hand it over to um, our next decentralized company. So some of us have probably seen some of these headlines already before. Cambridge Analytica, um, Equifax, data breaches. A lot of these problems really stem from the fact that data is centralized. Even if it's distributed in a cluster, it's still kind of owned, managed by a single company. So Bluezell, one of the... Um, reasons you know for creating Bluezell was really to have a decentralized data store where you're not relying on an AWS Azure or any kind of company to store your data you uh, you're relying on a decentralized ecosystem where the nodes are run by uh, trustless individuals and your data is secured that way nobody can breach your data so a real quick slide here it's a bit techy but the past the really w way back in the past you had kind of on-prem uh, databases where you had a single machine, which is on the far left, that had all your data stored on it. If that machine went down, you lost all your data. It's plain and simple. Uh, it was also a single point of failure. If somebody hacked into that machine, they could get access to all your data. The present model, which is Web 2.0, is where the application is talking to a load balancer and you're on a cloud, you might have multiple zones, but ultimately your data is still kind of still under AWS or Azure or any kind of company's domain. And it's still relatively simple for someone to go in and steal your data or corrupt your data. The future really, I believe, is about decentralization, which is the rightmost uh, diagram where you have an application that talks to a network of swarms. So each of those icons on the right there is, is a swarm. And what is a swarm? A swarm is a collection of nodes. Every node in that swarm has the exact same data. So think about redundancy. If any node in that network, in that swarm goes down, your data is still replicated. So now you have multiple swarms. Each swarm is storing different sets of data. So when you store your uh, application's information on the network, it's being chopped up and stored into shards across all these multiple swarms. So you've got some great benefits like security, 
uh, you know, if somebody breaches a swarm, they're not going to get all your data. They're going to get a tiny piece of it. There's also reliability. Within a swarm, your data is heavily replicated. So even if uh, a single node or a group of nodes goes down, let's just say there was a tsunami. Uh, Alaska had an earthquake this morning. Let's just say a bunch of nodes went down on the West Coast. Your nodes are still going to be, your, your data is still going to be available because it's, it's spread out across the world. And then integrity. There's um, nobody controlling all this network. People often ask me, what happens if Bluzel goes down? What happens if our company shuts down? We don't control the network. We created the software, but ultimately the network is run by people, individuals that run the nodes. We can't shut it down. We can't go and breach the integrity of any of the data that's on our network. So, uh, you know, some of the breakthroughs obviously are decentralization, um, off-chain storage. If you're a smart contract developer, you uh, now have a key value store. So Bluezell is a key value store that allows you to store this data off-chain. It's completely mutable, which is really important. Uh, GDPR came out this past May, and as, as some of you know, um, even though it's an EU regulation, privacy applies pretty much globally. If you have any kind of data stored for an EU citizen, even if you're not in the, in the EU, you can be sued. So it's really vital, actually, to be uh, respectful of these laws um, ahead of time. And then trustlessness, which is kind of the la big thing I really want to talk about, which is, you know, um, decentralized technologies are all about leveraging underutilized technologies that regular average people are using. It's not about data centers, it's about this huge disruptive move from data centers, which is Web 2.0 to Web 3.0, where you have people running laptops, PCs, even smartphones, and now those people can use their resources that they've already paid for. They've already got these devices they're running. These devices can now run, say, the Bluezell software, or the Noia software, or the NKN software, or whatever, and these become nodes, and they add value to a network. So our, our database, we have a software that you can run on your devices, and now you become a node in our network, and you can earn cryptocurrency in, in, uh, in response to doing that. So, quick little diagram. This is the look at one of our swarms. All the blue nodes are nodes that are running. The red node just died. Just imagine somebody's network died or they turned off their machine. And the green node just came to life. So, the idea here is your data is on all these nodes. Even if a bunch of nodes go down, it doesn't matter. The swarm automatically manages it. When a new node comes in to join the network, it'll join the swarms that need them the most. So last slide for me, uh, Bluezell came out with our alpha version. We called it Lovelace after Ada Lovelace at the end of June of 2018. Uh, that's already out and you can in fact use the key value store. There's no tokens necessary, it's a testnet. Uh, our beta, which is Bernoulli, is gonna be coming out at the end of December, so in just under a month. And it's gonna have uh, PBFT and permissioning. We're gonna be coming out with our mainnet in, uh, at the end of June 2019, which means you'll be able to earn cryptocurrency if you run on one of our nodes. Uh, one of the big emphasis that I'm trying to take now with my company, and that's kind of why we all got together here, is that decentralized technologies are not really about just blockchain developers. It's about bringing decentralized technologies to regular developers, developers in the Web 2.0 space, develop developers that are building mobile apps, developers that are building enterprise apps, developers that may not even know anything about blockchain. You don't need to know about blockchain to use decentralized technology. And one of our goals here is to give you that stack, that framework, so you can start to take advantage of and use decentralized technology without learning about blockchain or without even going and buying cryptocurrency. So for Bluezell, we have a Gitter, and I definitely encourage any developers in the room to uh, get on our Gitter and start uh, participating in our community. So I'll hand it over now to Yulun from NKN. Hello everyone, I'm Yulun, and co-founder and the CTO of NKN. So I'm going to give you a like, uh, very brief introduction of um, what NKN is. So a little bit of the background. So we know that the current uh, well, internet works and works well, especially for like centralized um, uh, scheme. But when things come to the decentralized world, uh, the current uh, system does not work that well. So for example, the traditional client uh, server model is not really suitable or workable for like decentralized applications. So imagine we want to have a decentralized chat or a game and the different peers want to communicate with each other. So traditionally this is done by having a server that is really in the traffic for the clients. But with a, without a centralized uh, server, we can we cannot do it now. 
So, well, uh, for some of the uh, like the de well, dev, dev developers, they use smart contract to do it, but that's not the well. That's very slow. It takes like many seconds to deliver the message, and it's very expensive. So, the real scalable and usable solution for decentralized application should be uh, there should be a way that you that any peers can communicate purely off chain uh, without any centralized entity. So, the second problem uh, is that well, we know that there are tons of uh, unused resources, like the, your desktop at home or even a laptop at home. So there are, uh, especially at, for the bandwidth, there are a lot of unused bandwidth. But if we can make use of those unused resources, we can not only solve the first problem, but also we can provide overall like a much better connectivity for like the over worldwide internet. And the third problem is actually related to the blockchain, especially consensus. So we know that there is generally a trade-off between the scalability and the performance. So when there are many nodes in the system trying to uh, perform the consensus and produce the blocks, the performance kind of goes, goes down very quickly. And in a de uh, so in, in order to solve this, some blockchain use a very centralized approach just having a few like master node in order to improve the performance. But we actually don't want to do that. What we want to have is a, like, a, a permissionless and open and scalable this, uh, like, uh, blockchain while having a much, much better like, performance than the current, uh, currently we have. So what NKN does is that NKN aims to solve this problem. So in short, NKN is, new can, uh, is, is, is short for new kind of network. It is like a peer-to-peer -peer network, or actually peer, uh, it's a de decentralized data transmission network powered by a novel block, uh, public blockchain. So, um, so basically every miner, uh, so the miner in the NKN network provides a huge uh, global decentralized data transmission network that helps to relay the traffic for clients so that each uh, different client, no matter where they are, they are can talk to each other uh, with, with just the like, permanent NKN address. So uh, for the blockchain part, uh, it's, it's based on the proof of relay and our like Mocha consensus algorithm, short for majority vote seller automata. So it's an e extremely efficient uh, consensus algorithm uh, that we proposed, and uh, it could uh, it could like let uh, millions or even billions of nodes reach consensus in just a few seconds, very efficiently. So basically, uh, in short, NKN tries to be the indispensable like network stack for all the decentralized applications. So a few technical highlights for the NKN system. So currently, we, uh, so basically NKN provides any client-to-client uh, -client communication without any server-side code, and it achieves millisecond-level latency since it's purely off-chain. And the network uh, transmission throughput is horizontal scalable. Basically, means that means the, the total throughput of the network uh, increases almost linearly with the number of nodes in the system. And also, our consensus algorithm is also horizontal scalable, meaning that it, it, we can achieve consensus for almost any number of nodes. So currently, we have a fully functional public test net, and as, seen, you, as you can see on the graph, uh, in the, on the image on the right, right side. So at the peak time, uh, uh, there were like up to almost 6,000 nodes in the network. And remarkably, there are only, we only control a few percent, less than 10 percent of all the nodes. So the rest are provided by community. They are trying to mine the testnet, testnet token, which has actually have some value. So uh, this, this network is already larger than most of the blockchain, existing blockchain, and only smaller than Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, network. So in NKN, each client has a permanent address, which is independent of IP address or so, so that client can send message to each other no matter where they are, and they don't need to worry about IP address at all. That's kind of uh, hidden. And uh, uh, the NKN address contains a public key, so that end-to-end -end encryption is kind of very trivial without, without relying on any centralized public infrastructure. So it's enhanced the security by one more level. And most importantly, it's in application in independent, which means that different applications, as long as they all use NKN client, they can talk to each other. So imagine Facebook Messenger and uh, like WhatsApp, they can kind of talk to, send, send to each other message. That would be like much better, for, uh, much better user experience in some cases. 
So there are like a few uh, like uh, ex uh, existing uh, uh, applications running on top of NKN. So the, the, the one that I want to mention, the feature one, is a space cat. So it's a real-time 3D like shooting game I run on top of NKN. It's, it's, it's purely client side, no server. So client can talk, client talk to each other and send updates regularly, actually set 30 times per second through the NKN network. And players can play with each other to, 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 shoot, to shoot each other, try to get a score. It's pretty, pretty awesome. So welcome to have a try. So basically, the, uh, the officially we only provide, uh, currently we only provide a JavaScript uh, client. Uh, but there are a few other NKN clients uh, implemented by the community, like C Sharp or the Java one. So it's really easy to use, and you just import library and initialize it, and send message or receive message. Seems it's just just as a like regular um, client without without uh, with, without anything to do with like blockchain or stuff. So we believe that this will greatly help us to gain like the user ad adoption. So basically, that's it. So I will pass it to Noah Network. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Jonas, CTO of Noah Network. Uh, we have a couple more colleagues here, so you can, if you show up your hands, uh, and you know, everyone feel free to, to, to come and, and chat with us later on. Uh, I'm going to explain very briefly, uh, without going into too much detail, what NOI Network is. So NOI stands for NOI, uh, Network of Internet Acceleration, and uh, it's basically a decentralized distributed C CDN, content delivery network. So yeah, it utilizes widely dispersed edge node network uh, to, to increase performance of content delivery. So the, the problem we are solving is that internet uh, has a lot of problems and inefficiencies. Even with the very start of, of uh, Gateway Border uh, Protocol, BGP, uh, it was invented in 1994, and uh, internet is still being used by a protocol which was made in 1994. Uh, not only that, uh, all of the, uh, the, the amount of content to be delivered became so large that traditional infrastructure is just not coping with it. So uh, in, in, it's, it's especially visible now when people are getting into 4K content, uh, VR, uh, games are requiring more and more content. And it's, it's estimated that the amount of content to be delivered uh, is, 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 is growing exponentially. And the current infrastructure and content delivery networks are, are just not coping with it. Uh, and, and we believe that uh, going to the edge instead of purpose-built data centers is going to be the answer. And, and the second problem is that blockchain-based and decentralized applications, they just don't have infrastructure at all. They don't have a decentralized content delivery because what kind of decentralized application are you if you're using uh, Cloudflare or Amazon as your content delivery? And, and current technologies, uh, you know, decentralized storage technologies like IPFS and StoreJ, they're not meant to be too efficient uh, uh, delivering data specifically. So, 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 so so we are providing a decentralized content delivery solution for the future decentralized applications. Now, uh, how does that work? So, um, then in traditional CDN, you have purpose-built data centers by, owned by Amazon, Akamai, etc., and and they have to be uh, not you know they have to be big and uh, and, and there's, it can never be as many data centers as can be regular uh, computers. And uh, when you go to your Facebook or anywhere, data is being transferred from your nearest server. Uh, what we're trying to do is creating a software uh, where you can install NOIA client on your machine and you become part of a CDN. So we, then a website uh, or a content owner uh, caches content into NOIA network, it goes to thousands of NOIA nodes run by regular computers, uh, regular people, uh, devices and, and utilizing their storage and, 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 and bandwidth as, as with the previous projects. So then the next time someone goes to your website, the content can be delivered not from Akamai's data center, uh, you know, hundreds uh, or, or thousands of miles away, but from a computer in, in the next neighborhood. Uh, not only that, uh, we control the routes how a network goes through those nodes, so we can solve those inefficiencies in the network and internet protocol because we can choose the best route because the best node uh, does not necessarily need to be the closest one. You know, if a further away node can have a better connection, so we control the routes in a, in a smart way how that uh, content is being delivered. 
uh, in the state of Noah network, we currently run a CDN alpha version. Uh, you can already download our client and become a participating node. Uh, we have uh, thousands of nodes being downloaded and uh, you know, at least a couple hundred nodes being run by our community at any one time. Uh, we currently have more than 80 terabytes of uh, storage our community members contribute from their computers, of which we can cache data. Uh, you can go to our website and uh, fill out a form so we whitelist your domain name and you can start using it uh, with, with our help. And, and as you can see, the nodes are dispersed all across the world. Uh, so we can, you know, our smart caching algorithms can tailor which nodes to deliver content to which providers and which, uh, which content owners and, uh, and make it more efficient and, and uh, for, for decentralized application, keep it all decentralized uh, without single centralized entity. Uh, yeah, so without further ado, uh, passing on to Portal. Hello everyone, I'm Vincent. So um, Chris, our founder, is, uh, lost his voice because of uh, too many pitch today. Um, so I would like to share some interesting things we've done in Portal. Um, Portal Networks is building a blockchain naming service uh, right now for uh, if you want to send tokens. Uh, right now, the wallet address is has a, demo, has a decimal address. So we would like to think that it's just like domain name represent to IP address. So uh, there will be naming systems to represent the wallet address to can let people to easily send tokens, digital assets through uh, through something, some your name dot ETH or your name dot icon. So uh, that's that's greatly solved for. Um, that's what we are trying to solve. Um, average average users can send tokens with each, each other through uh, simple name services, and also uh, based on blockchain naming system, we think about how can that people can get used to uh, decentralized technologies, uh, and not only not only developers, also non-technical users can experience all the technology. So uh, we provide Mume and Kaizen. Mume is focusing on such as a great uh, user-friendly uh, user interface and users can build their decentralized websites uh, easily to choose template and upload to IPFS. And also Kaizen, uh, I would like to show is that uh, it's focusing on helping developers can get used to decentralized technologies, uh, so, uh, such as uh, management systems. So Kaiser kind of management systems, there is a user-friendly interface to, uh, that developers can deploy, uh, deploy smart contracts, test contracts, and so on. And COI's command line interface uh, is to integrate different, uh, different Decentralized technologies such as Noya Network, uh, Blue Cell, and NKN, all is uh, useful SDK together to can let developers can uh, type uh, any they want to use or they feel want to play around in, in their command line and de uh, develop some cool stuff and they can use it. And universal infrastructure is uh, focusing on. Uh, provide uh, infrastructure services and RPC endpoints for a different blockchain protocol. In API and faucet, faucet pool is a cool stuff is that uh, once you want to test your contract such as for uh, icon or one chance, um, you have to get uh, the testnet tokens on each protocol follow different rules. However, uh, what if it's cool if we put in the same place, uh, developers can no, don't have to you know, walk around and see how, how we can follow something and, and then get testing token to for for development and and we can go into one place to such as I want to play around with one chain and I can get one chain tokens and another service need to for example and can tokens I can get the testnet tokens right away in the same uh, in the same page. So that's is a faucet pool to uh, to solve this problem and also hackathons to that that more people to experience decentralized technologies. Okay so um uh, first of all, uh, they can they can choose different decks and put them together for uh, your own project, and and for a smart contract development, they can one click to 
play around with the uh, template template contracts such as uh, ERC721, ERC20, or uh, many and many others, um, many others common template contract. So uh, they can know they can for a senior developer or junior developer not in the blockchain field can can experience right away how uh, how you interact with a smart contract and how you interact with um, a business object uh, on on chains such as uh, and so on yeah so no manager and testnet token is that uh, you can easily start your own node uh, right away uh, with uh, the management systems so such as you can start ipfs node uh, just one click and uh, and and you can provide the endpoint to that you interact with so the CLI, uh, uh, you can see that uh, it is open source, so feel free uh, if you want to contribute that. Um, so you can, basically you can start your own project and initialize it and test your, con test your smart contract on different blockchain protocols and play around with different library, decentralized libraries. So um, yeah, so that's pretty much it, yeah. Hello, I'm Bruce and I'm co-founder of NKN. So now it's, uh, the four projects have talked about their tech. Now it's the uh, Big Bang time, so Big Bang moment. So if we look back in year 1885, the first automobile on the right-hand side come from one of the founders of Mercedes-Benz, Car Benz. So if you look at the, the, uh, the horse-drawn carriage of the same time period, I think the horse carriage is probably much better, right? Better deco and uh, more comfortable. The horse is more reliable than the engine and no smoke and no other, other technical issues. But we think what we are doing today in the Web 3.0 infrastructure is a little bit like building the engine and the chassis and the components for this, uh, the first automobile. So year 2018, uh, in the last three days, the four project team together did a kind of a mini hackathon. So we put together a uh, Web 3.0 application called DChat, or like decentralized chat. So if you look at it on the surface of it, it's actually very primitive, primitive and it's kind of not very impressive at all. If you look at the left hand side, that's Slack, lots of people use and uh, lots of company use. So they are really in the state of art of today what a centralized application would look like. So what we try to demonstrate is not how we can do better UI or something like that on the surface, but what we can do differently underneath. So when you look at this DChat, even though on the surface it's similar to any of very kind of basic chat application, but underneath the database is decentralized from Bluezell. The, uh, the networking is decentralized peer-to-peer -peer by NKN. The CDN part is by NOAA. And also the files are all stored on IPFS and then all under a unified tool called the Kaizen. So it is really a large departure from a traditional Web 2.0 application, even though for the developer, it's actually very simple because you don't need to worry about blockchain, you don't need to worry about smart contracts, you don't need to worry about t test tokens. Those are taken care of by the, the toolkit and also the, the gateways we have provided. So what you actually need to focus on is just like any other application. I need to do the user authentication and creation. I need to do some data store. I need to send a message from one to another. I need to transfer some files and have persistency. That's all you need to worry about. And I will show you, and also the CTOs here today will show you how that can be done very easily without worry about test tokens and uh, smart contracts. So now back to the features. So this is definitely not the uh, horse carriage in 1885. So it's very primitive. So you can create an account, log in with a name service, that's done by Portal Network. And you can do one-on-one -on -one in group chat, nothing fancy. Send and receive messages through peer-to-peer -peer network without any centralized server by NKN. The data persistence between the sessions and between the clients by Bluezell, a decentralized database. And then you can load files through the content delivery network by Noia. And all the files are stored in decentralized storage by IPFS, another project based in San Francisco. And then the last one, we can host this DChat service on IPFS and access through the, the blockchain name service provided by Portal Networks. And at the end of the day, all of these for developer means you can use the, 
the Kaizen CLI to generate the template for this project. Okay, so soon you will see the, the demo. So again, very basic UI, three days of workshop, you don't get a lot of UI out of three days, but underneath the tech, it will be there. And then, I'll spend a little bit time on the architecture. I'm not the best person to talk about that. Some of the CTOs should talk about that, but very on a high level. So in the middle, you have the client, right? So that's actually the center of the world now. So in a traditional client-server model, you have a large client development team and a large server or backend development team. So right now, we will say, we don't want to do everything decentralized, but now we can do most of the things in the client side. You will still do something in the server side, but that's a different story. So if you look at all the SDK, so you have the computing SDK, you can use uh, some of the uh, uh, off-chain containers uh, from some of the blockchain projects, like Sonnen. You have Noya SDK to de decentralize CDN, Bluzel for the database, key value store, like uh, Mongo or a, uh, like uh, Redis. And the API SDK, we probably still need some servers, like uh, uh, Pub, uh, PubNub and uh, like uh, Twilio for some service we don't have. But we don't say we have to do everything decentralized. And we have NKN SDK to do data transmission, Portal SDK to do the name service. And then, of course, if you really have to do the smart contract, it's always there to do, to do using Kaizen um, the tool chain as well. So that's kind of basically the, uh, the, the fundamental architecture.